It's a real pleasure to be speaking with Jean Liu, Managing Director, Head of Global Banking, uh, China. Thank and you, Arika. Pleasure. And uh, also Christopher Kirugua. Uh, Christopher is the Executive Director and Head of the Public Sector here in East Africa. Jean, can I start with you first of all? Sure. You know, Standard Chartered has been uh, a kind of road builder of this China-Africa corridor. Um, uh, you know, wherever I turn, it's, it's Standard Chartered's name that's, that's affixed to this. Can you describe to us what it is when people are talking about it? And where do you think it's going? And what role Standard Chartered are playing? Yes, I, I like the term you use uh, to describe Standard Chartered like a road builder. Mm. It's actually we are. It's, um, we are, have been operating in both markets for over 150 years. And then I, I think in the, both China and Africa in our DNA. Yes. It's very naturally we think about the two markets and the strategy they, in group strate strategy, we uh, actually consider these two markets into you know, very high priority in terms of the strategy. And uh, if you look at the corridor things, I don't think it's a new thing. It's come along for quite a long time and I have uh, evolved in, into different versions, stages, I have to say. For the stage one, um, we talk about all the, people talk about raw materials, uh, mito minings and all these um, um, natural resources. That's very natural attractions to this market. But then um, we come to the stage two. The version two is like um, people is not think about only the raw materials and that they come over the huge investment in the in the infrastructure then we we, we see a lot of um, um, power stations and row and the bridges and uh, uh, all these um, good things happening here that infrastructure is very very important actually when i talk to the foreign investors and whenever they think about the new markets they're going to uh, uh, invest and um, the, the, the raw material and the plus the infrastructure is the first priority they will think about. And then, um, and of course the labor market. And then and we're very glad to see the manufacturing um, plants setting up, setting up here in this market. A lot of um, Chinese companies are no longer to uh, seek the export, the import, and they will actually build up manufacturing plants here and that's very important they train up the local the labor market and then create a lot of um, good job uh, job opportunities here and then naturally we'll see the trade booming up and so Africa is actually come becoming the manufacturing a kind of a manufacturing center to export to serve the local markets of course for the first things and then export to the rest of the world it's so all these good things happening here but this is only in the early stage, I have to say. And then to give us a lot of uh, room of imaginations of uh, what is next. Mm. Then today I, I actually very inspired by this, um, you know, the seminar, the panel discussions, and then the, what um, um, Chairman Mara of Alibaba um, said about the new entrepreneur. It's all about the future. It's about the future. We see the infrastructure ready and we see the huge plan of um, um, agriculture and we see a lot of um, new companies not convention companies come over to um, look at this market they are they come from the industries of healthcare and um, agricultures and they 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 are they are um, fintech um, finance industries there are all these kind of good things happening and, and attract a lot of um, um, entrepreneurs come over and today I have um, one data is really impressed me is that um, it's actually um, 10,000 Chinese companies yesterday op operated here in this African market. And uh, um, 10,000, 10, 90 percent uh, of them is come from the private firm, private sector. The Isn't perception is yes. that it's more state led. See, yes. see, that's our perception, right? Yes. But actually not. It's 90 percent is actually private sector. And then 85% um, of the, uh, the employee they hire is actually from local market. So um, if we look at the next five years or even going beyond five you years. You're calling this version two, I think. I think this is, we're talking about the version three. Version three. Yes, mm. that, that's all about the future. I think the version three, 
um, we can't limit ourselves about imagination. I think it's all about the connections. We connect um, Africa, Kenya especially. Kenya, we consider Kenya as a gate mm. to the Africa. And also, um, we see a lot of opportunities happening here, and we are seeing the goods, finished goods, to come from Kenya, come from Africa, to Asia, and to the rest of the world. And that's actually Standard Charter Bank is, uh, is, is doing now, and we are looking forward to, in, to doing more uh, in the future. That's the corridor we consider. It's all about the connections. Very exciting. Yeah. Chris, how does it look from the other side, from the African side? Describe to us, you know, what do you, how do you see this corridor working? What are the examples in terms of, you know, uh, the impact you're seeing on the continent? And what, where do you think it can be leveraged even further? Yeah. Thanks, Ellie. I think the first thing that we'll s we s we've been seeing with the Africa-China uh, trade corridor is where a, a number of uh, Chinese state-led uh, companies and big multinationals have been able to come into Africa to build infrastructure. Uh, one thing that's really changing is what we're, we're more see, what we're seeing more of is a number of these chi uh, Chinese companies are actually now coming to partner with local companies, which, are, which is actually building capabilities within the local markets to drive these infrastructure projects. Uh, something that's increasingly becoming more relevant is actually driving uh, manufacturing within Africa to ex and pro uh, uh, provide, I mean, uh, deliver finished goods mm -hmm. and supply them to the Asian market and the rest of the world. That's increasingly becoming more important uh, uh, from this this side of, uh, from this side of uh, the Africa uh, Africa China trade corridor. We're also looking uh, to do quite a bit on uh, agriculture, uh, whereby Africa can also supply food items to China. Uh, uh, encourage a lot of Chinese companies to come into Kenya, partner with, not into Kenya alone, into Africa. However, Kenya is clearly a big gateway uh, on, the, uh, on the Chinese one road, I mean, uh, one... One belt, one road. One belt, one yes. road. Uh, because if you look at that one belt, one road strategy, I think the, 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 the Mombasa Nairobi Railway is the first piece within the continent, isn't it? Indeed. If you look at the one belt, one road, uh, 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 one belt, one road, uh, corridor. Kenya is actually the gateway to Africa yeah. Yeah? and uh, it does, does not only link uh, Asia to, uh, to Africa, it actually links uh, uh, Africa to the rest of the world. So that's very critical for us as Standard Chartered Bank and uh, one thing as where our footprint sits, these are our key markets. We've been in China for over 150 years. We've been in Kenya for over 100 years. This helps us significantly to be the ones helping our clients both in China and in Kenya mm. to be able to build these partnerships uh, uh, to deliver on this one, one, uh, one, one, one belt, one road uh, 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 deliverable. So do, so do you think that the statement that the Chinese financed the railway Mombasa Nairobi was a big statement confirming the gateway status, Chris? A absolutely. Mm. That's real, that shows real commitment. Mm. It actually shows real commitment that the Chinese are willing to come in and, and partner with, the, uh, with the, uh, the countries to deliver this co trade corridor. The, uh, the, the standard gauge railway will not only facilitate trade for Kenya, it actually facilitates trade for the entire Eastern and Southern Africa because it, 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 it will foster, it will provide a, it provides a corridor for Kenya, uh, Uganda, Rwanda, uh, you, t you go to South Sudan, Ethiopia. So it's, it's a remarkable thing and th this partnership actually needs to continue to be built and uh, something we need also to drive further is it, it, we need to take it uh, outside just government to government to pri private sector linking up with the private sector. Yeah, so I, I want to echo and uh, Chris that China itself is actually build up the connections starting from the infrastructure, especially the railway. Mm -hmm. They uh, speed up the railway for several times and now you can see if you look at the infrastructure, look at the logistics, to look at it, the finished goods and the even raw materials, they can, they can get everywhere they want. So that's very important. So we, we believe this is a good well to start with uh, in Kenya, to starting from the uh, railways, to starting from the infrastructures and to get things ready for the next booming. Yeah. Jean we're to and Chris, we're talking about hard infrastructure here. What about, you know, uh, if, for example, Kenya is a 50% of services economy. Today we were listening to Jack Ma, chairman of Alibaba, 
really a new uh, the new a new economy business. How do you see the new economy uh, playing out in this China Africa corridor? D- are we already seeing signs of it, or you know, are we just at the beginning? And what can it look like? I believe this is just begin. It's a lot of um, it's a, from my um, perspective. A lot of um, uh, my clients is actually asking about Africa, asking about, asking about Kenya, as what kind of opportunities. And uh, previously, in the past few years, it's all about EPC contract constructors. They are asking about the whether or not there were uh, um, you know, project opportunities and uh, available for them. But nowadays, uh, it's everywhere. I'm talking about healthcare and the consumers and the f- fintech and the money payment companies, all this kind of a new industry and uh, varies, not only SOEs, but also a majority of them is appeal in, 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 the, in the private sectors. They, um, a lot of them has already come to this market to find the local partners. Because um, one of the lesson I, uh, they, they always bear in mind is that to find a, a right trusted local partner is very important for them because they are going to uh, any overseas investment is going to have some risk, um, the cultural risk, social, legal, regulatory risk. But um, uh, I think they are coming to find the right partner. That's what Standard Chartered Bank and also the local government can, you know, can do more to facilitate that kind of connections happening. That I believe will. You know, uh, with that kind of facilitating, we will see a lot of good things happening. You're talking a much more of a collaborative type of yep. a- a economic perspective, uh, which seems to have evolved a little bit. Yes. Chris, are you seeing that that it's we're more in an age of collaboration now between China and Africa? Um, it's more sophisticated, maybe, than it was before. And then also wanted to ask you, you know, are you the connector? I mean, I come from Africa as well, and Standard Chartered has been here for hundreds of years. So in some cases, I think that you've got a branch somewhere which is 110 years old. Yeah. So you have the understanding of the continent, and of course, coming out of Asia, as it were. Tell us a little bit about what what Jean was saying. How does that really? How does it change your life? How are you? Uh, you know, how are you as a business exploiting that opportunity? Uh, absolutely. Collaboration is what's going to make this world. Actually, it's like uh, what uh, Chairman Jack Ma said today, it, it, the partnership is what's going to foster growth, the next, the next level of growth. Um, if, if you look at uh, you, you, you using um, the collaborative e- uh, efforts we're talking about, uh, you look at, uh, we've got deep-rooted knowledge, for example, in Africa. Jin uh, runs the, Asia, the, the China business. Co- using those two linkages, Top Chinese clients wanting to do business in Africa, the best person to provide that gateway is a partner like Standard Chartered Bank. Mm-hmm. When you look at any client, and I'll, I'll use a, a, an example, it's not just importing from China. If you look at the, the leaders of mo- mobile technology, is actually Kenya, mobile payment technology, uh, using the M-Pesa platform. Uh, Kenya can be also, using Standard Chartered Bank, is working with our clients like Safaricom to export uh, those solutions into China and the rest of Asia. So collaboration has become the big, it's, it's actually, it has to happen. It's what's going to foster more trade, more partnership, and more growth uh, within the continent. Yeah. yeah. And the world changes too fast. Yes. It's just too fast. I think we cannot uh, rely on experience mm. to participate in you know, um, the future. Mm. We, um, we actually, we're doing right things. Every day is we make sure we're doing the right things to follow the trend, follow you know what is happening for the innovation and to see what is happening but um, today we, if you look at look back in in today what we're doing now I truly believe um, we're doing the right things for these uh, both markets to facilitate that the, the connections and to uh, create the good things happening in in the both markets Jean I also saw in, in your with your wearing your Chinese investment banking hat I saw that you know China is now making a huge impact in terms of financing uh, uh, frontier market economies which happened to dovetail a lot with the obor strategy um, for example I was looking at Sri Lanka sold some debt and it was pretty much taken up by the Chinese 
Are you seeing any big changes in the way the Chinese are now putting their money to work in the frontier, in the emerging market economies? Or, or is, it, is it more impactful, would you say, now? How would you describe it? Fundamentally, it does seem it has been changed. It will continue. Um, but I, I, I will see that the uh, finance, the weight of a finance has been uh, uh, involved a little bit. It's not only about that. It's not only about the policy banks to dump money into a certain market and to do, you know, infrastructure things, project things. Um, it's actually a lot of fun. We attract a lot of fun, uh, different kind of money. For example, venture capitals and funds. And you heard about the Silk Fund, right? Yes, yes, yes. yes. Why yes. don't you tell the viewers yeah. about that? Yeah. Silk Fund is our uh, clients as well. Mm. And then uh, when the silk funders come to the market, they, uh, they have their principal to invest. They choose the partner, whenever it's a Chinese partner or the uh, foreign partners, whenever, as long as the, 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 the project or the, uh, that kind of investment is to uh, fulfill um, their principles, they were going to uh, you know, partner with the local spon uh, sp sponsors or, or the um, project contra contractors to, you know, to invest in that um, project. So uh, that also attract a lot of the various about uh, the modern national funds as well, and also the um, private sectors to uh, put their money into the uh, certain um, projects they are interested in. So it's all about uh, you know, um, connect, to put the themes on the table and uh, connect the, the whole world to have the self-assess on the possibilities and the interesting of that project and then attract all the money come from various industries and the sectors. So we, we see that happen as well. And Chris, how does that, I mean, you know, you're, sit, you're sitting here, you're responsible for the public sector, I believe. Um, how has that impacted the public sector? I mean, have you brought Chinese capital when, you know, when you've been, for example, there was a big transaction you did with Kenya Power, restructuring the balance sheet, things like that. Is that is Chinese money impacting at these sort of levels or not yet? No, certainly. Uh, in, in the recent, on the, even when you look at the recent big syndicate, uh, syndicated deals, we're more and more seeing Chinese banks actually investing in, uh, in projects in Kenya, uh, which wasn't the case in the, uh, in, in the recent past. This is just something that started, we, we've started seeing it evolving. Uh, we also, as a bank, recently did uh, a transaction for an Africa multilateral yes. and uh, we, it was fully led by Chinese investors and we saw Chinese investors fully investing in uh, an Africa multilateral and was fully subscribed. Yeah? So it's more and more, it's, uh, Africa is becoming more known to Chinese banks and Chinese investors and uh, it's the, the risk, that the perceived risk that was there in the past is become, it's becoming, uh, they're understanding it much more and they've been able now to come in and participate on a number of the projects and a number of the, of the facilities which, uh, which, which are available. We're seeing a lot of the uh, Chinese uh, uh, banks and investors are, able, uh, are more willing now to come into, into Africa to participate on the opportunities which are available within our markets. And Jean, you know, going back to that, what you're telling us about the corridor, and it was once a very commodity story. If you look at the hard data now, commodity prices have fallen. Our exports out of Africa have slowed down to China because of a price adjustment in part. Um, do, if this continues, where do you think the corridor goes? Yes, the corridor, again, is not about raw material commodities. Yeah, of course, Africa has a lot of rich commodities and resources, and that will continue. This is very important for Africa as well. But for China, I don't see this as um, you know the main topic or the main theme about investor about the corridor business. And uh, I do see uh, various sectors, various industries. You were saying agriculture at one point. Of course, yes. Everyone talks about that, saying you know yeah. 1.3 billion people need to be fed. <laughs> yes. and the, uh, this common remark that Africa is the only leftover arable land. Are you seeing investments coming into that in a big way? It's, uh, currently, yes. I, uh, we have a lot of uh, um, Chinese companies. They are focusing in agriculture industries and uh, uh, product 
pro uh, focused on the products and, uh, and you know, high tech or no, um, fertilizer, something like that. Um, they are very interested. And one of my company is actually um, focused on the rubber. Yes. Has already invested, a huge invested uh, investment has already uh, happening in this market. Mm -hmm. So they, they are coming to invest and to um, actually learn something from Africa. To, uh, that, that was a, sub, I, I see that the two markets actually um, complement to each other. I, I can anticipate um, in the future markets, whenever there is a, um, when there is a the huge plan of uh, uh, Kenya, Afri uh, agriculture plan has come out, the more and the more um, the, the, the investment about agriculture investment will come over as well. Yeah. Chris, where, where is the money being put to work today, in your opinion, in East Africa from China? Most, most of the money that's coming in from China is mostly going to infrastructure mm. uh, currently. Um, that's still going to These go These are on. the big ticket trades, right? So, certainly. Yeah. Yeah, so certainly. Yes. If, you look, if you look at the opportunities here uh, on, the, on the power sector, you look at uh, the big transmission lines, yes. you look at our roads projects, you look at our, our rail the Standard Gauge Railway, which we just completed yes. uh, with a partnership with the Chinese government. Uh, most of it is going to infrastructure currently. Uh, the way I see it moving forward, um, it's, it will move more to partnership with big manufacturing companies setting ground within the markets. So you buy into this idea that there's a whole bunch of manufacturing jobs that need to be transferred out of China into Africa. I think there was a... World Bank economist called Justin Lin, who was speaking about it quite a long time ago. Yeah. Um, it, it's happening. Mm -hmm. It's happening. And a lot of, but why, you know, are we a more competitive destination than Ethiopia? Because it see, Ethiopia to me struck me as like China, a repeat of ch the way China modernized. Mm -hmm. what, what are the advantages, in your opinion, for, from Kenya versus, you know, some of our competition? W one, one critical thing that when you look at Kenya, Kenya is a very diverse market, very diverse economy, and uh, Kenya does not have a lot of controls that other markets, our, our competitor markets within our neighbors. Such as? What controls you do? Currency controls, yeah. for example. So Kenya is a very free market. For you, you, uh, investors can come into Kenya and actually get their money out very freely. That's something that's not very accessible in, uh, in most of our competitor markets. Uh, one thing that has made us not competitive, which, uh, which we acknowledge as a country is, uh, in Kenya, the, the cost of logistics was extremely expensive in the past. Uh, you look at the cost of power. Cost of power was very expensive because we're using, uh, we were using thermal power uh, and a lot of uh, emergency power solutions. That's completely changing. That's turning around. We're, using, we're seeing much more on uh, a lot of geothermal uh, investment, uh, a lot of wind investment, and the cost of power is significantly going to shift downwards over a very short period of time. We've got a 300 megawatts uh, wind plant coming up in, um, in Turkana. We've launched a number of uh, geothermal plants in Olkaria. And uh, so that the cost of power will come down. The second item is the cost of logistics. With implementation of the standard gauge railway, the cost of transport, of transporting these goods from, uh, from the manufacturing sites if to the export market, market, that will become much more easier and much more friendly. I see that growing and, and, and it's also evolving. I see this uh, evolving and with the more infrastructure development that takes place, what the government is doing to build the infrastructure within our markets, the cost of the logistics will come down, the cost of doing business will come down and, will, the, and, and our markets will become very competitive to, uh, to distribute finished goods uh, to, to Asia and to the rest of the world. And if you think about it, Mombasa is really a gateway to th nearly three billion people market on that Indian Ocean or all the way up to the South China Sea. Um, do you think these are the magic ingredients for manufacturing to move to Kenya? If you are an entrepreneur, yes. you will ask yourself that where I will set up my manuf manufacturing plants. You will consider the markets, you will consider the raw material, you will consider the labor markets, educated people, and you will consider the friendly of the environment, of the government, the regulatory law. And you, if you combine all these elements, Kenya have a lot of a tickle, mm. right? Yes. 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 So it's very natural for people to think about Kenya. And I find yeah. it, you know, what is it I find incredible is we have a convertible currency, a 50 cent bid offer spread, people can come and trade with your bank. And these are things which are not the case in many other countries. 
are Chinese investors, are they sophisticated now? Do they understand the different jurisdictions, the different risks, uh, do you think, Gene? You know, something like South Africa, policy-making risks, Nigeria, FX risks. Are people really tuned into these things or is it still, you know, one big continent? No, I don't think everybody, you know, every entrepreneur knows what's happening in this market. That's why they need us. <laughs> yeah, that's why they need uh, um, the expertise. Uh, they, they need uh, um, the bank, international bank like us. We know, we fully understand both markets, African markets and China markets. We know what people is think about and uh, what is their priorities. They look at the markets, the elements they're looking for. Um, so I think it's an one take out um, take away from me from today's um, um, seminar mm. is that um, we need to do more um, organize all this um, um, good information mm. to um, promote the both markets in both countries. That kind of uh, um, you can you can call it education. That kind of uh, information sharing need to be more organized. And I, I really like um, today, um, um, Chairman Ma has been invited as the uh, industry mm. ambassador mm. to uh, Kenya. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's the best part of <laughs> That was good. <laughs> yes, that was good, yes. So this kind of, uh, you know, y if the information is, um, is shared enough yes. to both countries, I do think uh, a lot of, uh, you know, naturally people will, you know, the money is very smart. Yes. The money will find their own way yeah. to the right markets, and they will naturally find a way here. Yeah. Could I could I just build to Jane's yes. uh, point? We actually have a, a, a research team, both in uh, in China, and we also have an Africa research team, uh, which actually educates our clients on the various risks, and that's that's information we widely share with our clients in China and our clients within, the, uh, uh, with, within Kenya and the rest of Africa. So we, we built, we don't look at it as just one continent. W uh, we look at each market independently. We share with, our, with we sh if, if we've got a client wanting to do business, for example, in Ethiopia, we, we prepare great research for them to, uh, to provide them the right information when they want to get into, this other mar into, into these markets for them to be able to make calculated risks uh, to, to seize the opportunities they're looking to do. You know, every, we have an, Corridor bankers here, mm. they're very experienced banker, mentoring speaker, and uh, you know, to facilitate all this uh, information share, and to provide high quality service to the uh, local uh, companies, and to make them to, to feel you know like to be served like home. And at the same time, we do uh, the road show every year, and uh, um, Kenya African colleagues that come over to the markets, they're coming actually. And every year, a um, Chinese, um, you know, um, banker uh, from SCB China will come over to Africa, including Kenya, to do the roadshow to in, in introduce what's happening in the market, and to answer the questions about about the regulations and you know all this um, kind of an um, FT finance <laughs> financial times uh, you know news and what is the background uh, the, of the news, and all these kind of uh, things. It's it's actually to uh, to do the connection to build up the kind of a connection, the mutual understanding of the both markets. And I think um, with all these joint efforts, people will get to know um, what they want to know in both markets. Yeah. Any closing comments, Chris? No, I think it was a lovely event today. Fantastic. <laughs> uh, very inspirational. Yes. Very inspirational. Yes. Jack Ma, the panel, did an exceptional job. Mm. Uh, insp uh, and I look forward for us to continue in to participate in many more of this, yeah. working jointly with our, uh, our, our teams from Kenya and our teams in China. And uh, I'll say, if anyone is looking to do business, uh, anyone from Asia looking to do business mm. in, 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 in Africa. Call you. Call me. <laughs> <laughs> That's the best part. And you too, Jean. Shall yes. we call you if we want to come to China? I welcome you in China. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank, Thank you, you, Jean. Thank you. Thank you, Ali. It was a pleasure. Thank you, Thank you Chris. Pleasure. Thank you, Ali. Thank yeah. you. Thank you very much.